Welcome Rabbit here and today we are looking at the ZSX breakout board from Parallel Miner and why it is nicknamed the Game Changer. Here is our ZSX motherboard, the Game Changer. Uh, we're going to go through the wiring guide right quick. This is posted on Parallel Miner's website and I will have a link to that in the description if you need to research it further. First up we got this Molex port here. It is but it isn't. <laughs> this is just a 5 volt remote sensing Molex port so it's to connect like a power management tool or whatnot just so you can remotely turn off and on your rig or set a schedule or something. Do not hook anything that needs power into this plug because you will probably fry this motherboard or I guess it's not a motherboard but the breakout board. Uh, your power one is down here but we'll get to that in a minute. Here we have two four pin uh, controllers. They're just to sync out compatible breakout boards with each other to turn off and on separately. You do need a separate sync cable to run those two effectively. Okay so here is the main reason why this breakout board is so popular and much needed and sold out constantly is this 24 pin adapter right here comes out and splits to a 24 pin on your motherboard as well as your CPU. So this powers your complete system here. You do no longer need an ATX uh, power supply to run a system motherboard when it comes to mining. On top of that, this is a Molex plug that you would use for power and it splits out to a, a, to a SATA and a Molex plug, say for your SSD and as well as possibly a fan controller or whatever. Although we do have a fan controller here, we'll get to in a minute, but these two drive with each other. Now I found this out and I contacted Parallel Miner. They called me back and they're going to try to fix this. But you do not get any power out of this Molex unless this 24 pin is being used. Which I found out when I was testing out a Rebtech motherboard. Which is powered by a single 6 pin. Most of you have probably seen that. So if you use that you will not get power out of here. Because you need this 24 pin to close the circuit and actually hooked into a motherboard for this to work. So keep in mind, these two jive with each other. They need a closed circuit in order for this to actually work. Next up is obviously here, we have 16 PCI Express plugs. They're six pin, you can come out, get a six pin to a dual eight pin, a six pin to a six pin, whatever you want. But you got 16 of these on here and that is why people love server power supplies. They're cheaper than ATX. And you just have a lot of PCI Express uh, slots to deal with and you have no problems powering your cars whatsoever. So earlier I did state this does have its own fan controller on the side as well as power management. So how the power management works is you have these two slots here. Now say you want to run this side on your system so you'd plug your power management to your system on your motherboard here and all these down the line they will run off the speed set in your system for those fans and say you want this off your mother or your CPU then these would all base off your CPU heat so these would crank up crank down however how however it's telling you off based off your motherboard settings now you don't need to use these you can just run these straight and I believe there's 10 of them 2 4 6 8 10 so yes we got 10 if you skip the power management control and went straight here these would all be straight 100% power fans going full blow full bore like you would need on say your system running the external fans onto your cards for crypto mining. So now we're going to look out how to install this so basic installation first you're going to need an HP server power supply one like so this is a 1200 watt on 240 and 900 watt on 120 or you could have one of these big bad boys right here and this is a 2400 watt but only on 240 you cannot use this guy on 120 but installation is quite simple as you can see here we got some pins and they will line up with these pins here on the end here so we'll just line them up and push them in like so boom so yeah, we are installed onto our server power supply. Next we'll show you the wiring. Before we hook that up to a motherboard, I just wanted to point out if you did have a big bad boy 2400 watt like this, look at that. <laughs> Matched with an X11. This is 32 PCI Express slots. So you have no problems hooking up as many cards as you can up to this 2400 watt. Uh, H, uh, Delta power supply. So we got this all set up on our server power supply. Here is our 24 pin. As you can see right there, 24 pins, and it does, you see it splitting out. 
into our 24 pin for the motherboard and our CPU so this end here as you can see will go right here like so and this end here 24 pin CPU CPU will obviously go to our CPU plug here our CPU plug here will go to our motherboard CPU plug right there so we'll just stab this straight into there and then you'll have power going into your uh, motherboard and your CPU will be powered as well. So we can just show you right quick with it plugged in. As you can see, 24 pin in the breakout board. CPU is coming around and down into there. And the other end is coming down straight into the motherboard. So now if you turn this on, this motherboard would fire up. Next up, we do have our Molex cable. Now that we have this plugged in, this Molex will have power and it comes with this splitter here. So we got our Molex that would point into our mother, our breakout board and it splits out to a SATA and another Molex for other power, like say a fan controller or whatever else you need to plug uh, use for power, maybe a motherboard. There are splitters that you can use one to three of these for some motherboards that require that to power the PCI Express slots. But yeah, so we're going to install this right quick and show you that what that looks like. So once plugged in, as you can see, there is our Molex plugged in. And it is coming out to our solid state driver, SSD, right here for the power. So if we fired this up, oh, that almost fell through. If we fired this up right now, uh, system would be powered off this power, server power supply. And our SSD would be powered up. Obviously, we got to plug the cable in from our SSD to the motherboard. We're not doing that, just basic operations of how this actually gets set up. And now we'll kind of look at the fan controller. Here we are, testing purposes. I did plug in three fans from this rig. These three right here, as you can see, none are currently running. We do have power going to our power supply. So I'm gonna turn this on and we will see power. Look at that, see, we are spinning, running fans off this breakout board now like i said we are not using the power management cable to our system or cpu so these will be running at 100 percent so they're hauling us on power <laughs> we're just going to turn that off but yeah so that is how the fan controller works and if you need extensions like i do or i would have this in here with my RevTech set up, that little motherboard right there uh i do need those extension cables so that all of these would actually reach to this breakout board i hope i covered everything you guys were curious about about this breakout board it is amazing i love this product and i gotta get more of these before they're completely sold out they go so fast links are in the description if you need one and i love server psus if you're a miner i highly recommend server psus over the expensive atx power supplies because like i said like this one right here you could probably you could probably buy two or three of these for the price of one of those maybe two of those you could probably buy four or five of these for the price of one of these 1200 watts it's insane they're so much cheaper uh, you don't have to worry about using sata you have pci express for everything no worries about burning down your house due to power failures and not being able to hook up all your cards properly so thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you on the next one rabbit out